Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I like to do is kind of discuss the transformations of the absolute value graph uh, <clears throat> based on these kind of equations. And I will go over another equation that's going to add some kind of uh, complexities to determining the transformations. But basically, we have the absolute value um, equation or function, you know, kind of labeled here, this equation. And basically, what we want to understand is, you know, what are going to be the transformations? How, is, how are we going to transform by shifting, reflecting, um, you know, compressing, stretching our graph. So I think the first important thing is to understand what exactly the graph looks like, which we very commonly talk about as the v-graph. And the reason why it looks as we call it the v-graph is because basically it is a nice big v, all right? But there's a couple important things we need to understand about the absolute value graph. First of all, here is what we call our vertex. And you can see the vertex is just kind of where our two arms of our graph kind of meet together and then go off in their own separate ways. Now, the vertex has, a coordinate, has at the coordinate points of 0, 0 when we have no transformations. All right? Now, what's important about the transformations um, fact is that really identifying is what exactly they do to the graph. Well, by looking at. Um, by kind of messing around when our investigation course, when we see like, you know, what certain numbers do when we use a table of values, what we're able to determine is that the vertex, the new vertex goes by our labels of h comma k. So there, for instance, if I have an equation y equals absolute value of x minus 5, well, let's say x minus 5, then my new vertex is going to be 5 comma 0. That means when it's x opposite of 5, right, x opposite of h is h, so there's where it's 5. That means instead of my vertex being at 0, 0, now it's at 5, 0. That means this whole graph is being shifted over 5 units to the right. If I have something that looks like this, x minus 5 on the outside, what that means is now my k, so now my vertex is 0, comma, negative 5. So now my graph, instead of having vertex 0, 0, is now being shifted down 5 units. So our h and our k are going to be our um, what we call our translations. They're going to shift the graph left or right or up or down. So we can say h is going to be the horizontal horizontal shift. I won't use translation. And k is going to be what we call our vertical shift. All right. Now, it's very important to understand. A lot of students you know, make the mistake when it's x minus h. They say, oh, it's minus h, so go to the left. But remember, the graph says x opposite of h, and then the vertex is what h is, just h. So if it's x minus 3, then h is 3. That means I'm shifting the graph to the right. So it's kind of the opposite when it's inside the function. And then obviously, if k is positive, you go up. If k is negative, you're going to shift down. The next thing is going to be the a. Now, what the a is going to do is the a is going to kind of affect our slope of the graph. As you can see right here, I'm going over one, up one, over, over one, up one. And I continue that pattern if it's positive or if it's negative. But if I have an A that is larger than 1, let's say 2, and you look at a table, what it does now is instead of going over 1, up 1, it says go over 1, up 2. And so you, when, the letter, when A is larger than 1, you're making the slope exactly what that slope is, and it's getting much steeper. So therefore, what we call is a compression. However, if like a was less than 1, then it's going to be a stretching. So it's a compression. That means it's going to make the slope larger when the absolute value of a is greater than 1. And it's a stretch when the absolute, that means it's just going to kind of make it a wider, right? So you're stretching it when the, abs, when the absolute value of a is greater than 0 but less than 1, meaning it's going to be like a fraction between 0 and 1. So the next thing is, well, what about what if a is less than 0? What if it's negative? And if it's negative, then the graph is actually going to be reflected over. All right, So it's actually going to go down, um, be opening downwards. So it's going to be reflect the x-axis when a is less than 0. Because a can still be negative, and you can still have a compression. a can still be negative, and you can still have a stretch. All right, that's why we use the absolute value of a. Now, to get things even more confusing, there is also another, no, there's also another number that we can place here that can affect our graph, and that is going to be in front of our x. So to do that, we're going to use the equation y equals a times bx minus h, absolute value bx minus h plus k. 
And now we're going to look at what exactly is B going to do, because a lot of the transformations are the same. The K is actually not going to be affected. The A is not going to be affected. But our H will be affected. So rather than our vertex just simply being H and K, when we have a coefficient that's for B, our vertex is now going to be H over B comma K. All right? It's actually going to affect our horizontal transformation. So it's very important to understand if, when we have a B, when there's a number in front of our X, that we compute the vertex as H over B. And we can also under identify our compression and our stretch based on what B is. Because if, if B it could also be a compression, So B can also be what we have as a compression when we have, um, actually, sorry, well, gets a little bit, uh, yeah, when B, OK. Um, yeah, it's also a compression. I'll just leave it at that, Hor horizontal compression. Sometimes we think of like a vertical, vertical stretch. But I'm not going to get through that. Um, compression when absolute value of B is greater than 1. And it could also give us a stretch. when the absolute value of b is between 0 and 1. And it also will give us a reflection. But it's not going to reflect over the x-axis. It's now going to reflect over the y-axis when b is less than 0. Now, it is important to note that when we reflect over the x-axis, you can obviously see instead of the graph opening upwards, now it's going to open downwards. But I can reflect across the y-axis all day long because you can see there's an axis of symmetry. It's the exact same graph on the right and the left. However, this will come into play and be very important if we're shifting the graph left and right and reflecting it over the y-axis. That's where we could have some issues um, and some problems with that. But um, we'll get into those examples in this course. Um, it won't be an issue. We'll use a table, and it'll be very helpful. But as far as understanding what are the different ways we can transform our graph, that is all we need, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks.